Okay, student, let's see what is there in this question. Planets X and Y move in circular orbits around the same star. The orbital period of planet Y is twice the orbital period of planet X. The orbital radius of the planet X is R. What is the orbital radius for the planet Y? So it's a very similar question to what we did a couple of questions back. We were using Kepler's law at that time. So I would be a bit more descriptive. Just listen to this. So we were using the third Kepler's law. And according to that law, the square of the time period is directly proportional to the cube of semi-major distance. So I, in that video, I have explained to you what is semi-major distances and all. Like uh, here, we can take it, take that in brief. Like this is A, this thing is A, and the total time taken is T. This will be the position of the sun. And the planet could be anywhere on the orbit. So if this is the condition, T square is directly to A cube. So in this case also, we can apply the Kepler's law straightforward, but there is a bit problem here. It is clearly written that yes, these, the orbits are circular. So you might feel that they are not elliptical because in the Kepler's law, all the orbits are assumed to be elliptical. And that is why he gave the formula, which is in the terms of semi-major axis. And you would be feeling like this is a circle. There is no semi-major axis there. So can we use the Kepler's law? Well, the answer to that question is yes, of course, we can use this because the circle is just a special case of ellipse when A is equal to B. This thing is called B, the minor axis, semi-minor distance. This is major, semi-major distance A. So circle is a special case of ellipse when A is equal to B. So Kepler's law is valid even in this case. So we can solve it similar to the way that we have already used earlier. We can apply that. But because in this question particularly they have written it is circular orbit. So I can give you the second method also. So if you want to go for this Kepler's law, you can. And there is another video available for the Kepler law. Please watch other videos to know more about them. But in this, we are going to go for the second method. Now, this is the planet sun or something. Yes, the star. Mm -hmm. And this is one planet which is moving. So we will say that the orbital speed for this will be same as that of the orbital speed of a satellite. So that will be given by GM divided by R square root, where this planet mass M is M, the, sorry, the star is M, and the planet for the mass of the planet is small m. The distance between these two is R. So this is the orbital velocity. I can find time period by saying the circumference of this has to be covered with the orbital velocity. So it is 2 pi r divided by v naught. So it will give you 2 pi r divided by gm divided by r square root. No problem up to this. No problem up to this. Because these things can be done only if we have this assumption that yes, the orbit is circular. Now, we are going to square this. It will become t square. This will become 4 pi square. This r, one moment, please. Yes, this r, it will be, it will go to the numerator, get multiplied. It will become r cube. This will be gm. And yes, this is our final answer for time. Eventually, you find that this is actually the same thing that was told by Kepler years earlier, isn't it? So T square is directly proportional to R cube becomes the same formula again. So if you want to use this method, you can use the method too, or you want to go for the Kepler's method, even then you would be getting the same answer, the same equations, no doubt, no problem with that. Let us now create the equations, particularly for this question. So time period for X divided by time period for Y square is equal to Rx divided by Ry square. R y cube, sorry. Yes. Uh, what is the orbital radius of planet Y? So we want to find R Y. All other three variables will be given to you. The orbital time period for Y is twice that of X. So this, it will be like this. So it will become 1 by 4 is equal to distance of X, distance of Y cube. So that will become the cube root there. You want to find R Y. So we just cross multiply R Y cube is equal to four times R X cube. Now we take the cube root on both sides. R Y is equal to four cube root R X. Clearly B will be the correct answer. This is how we do it. In the first part of the video, we learned that there are two different methods in which you can just imagine how to solve these questions. 
both of the methods are telling you the same final expression. You just plug in the value, get the answer, and the answer is B. No doubt with that. Okay, dear students, this is Professor Vern. Thanks for watching. Please join the YouTube channel if you want to learn the theory of this topic. All the best. Bye.